This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Good. The significance of perseverance. If people see the capital going on, he had said, it is a sign we intend the union shall go on. And it had. Now Lincoln stood again where he had stood four years before, on the east front of the capital. Hundreds of thousands of Americans who had been alive on March 4, 1861, were dead, slain by one another's hands. Innumerable others were wounded and maimed in body and in spirit. Everything had hung in the balance since Fort Sumter. We are now on the brink of destruction, Lincoln had said after a late 1862 Union defeat at Fredericksburg. It appears to me the Almighty is against us, and I can hardly see a ray of hope. Until victories at Gettysburg and Vicksburg in the summer of 1863, the war had seemed lost. Even afterward, the president had expected to lose re-election in 1864. Now, in the late winter of 1865, Union forces were poised for ultimate victory. And at last, slavery was in its final months of life in the United States. Emancipation had created a different country, and the man at the pinnacle of power, about to address the nation on the occasion of his second inauguration, had put anti-slavery principle into practice, pursuing justice at perilous moments when a purely political man might have chosen a different course. Successive generations have variously depicted Lincoln as a secular saint, the savior of the Union, and the great emancipator as a grasping tyrant, or as a calculating political creature imprisoned by public opinion and white prejudice. The truth is more complicated. Driven by the convictions that the Union was sacred and that slavery was wrong, Lincoln was instrumental in saving one and in destroying the other, expanding freedom and preserving an experiment in popular government that nearly came to an end on his watch. In him, we can engage not only the possibilities and the limitations of the presidency, but the possibilities and limitations of America itself. There were political and practical reasons for Lincoln to do what he did, yet there were also political and practical reasons for him to do the opposite of what he did. A constant in his calculus, sometimes decisive, sometimes not, but always there, was his moral opposition to human enslavement. This book charts Lincoln's struggle to do right as he defined it within the political universe he and his country inhabited, not to celebrate him for moral perfection, for he was morally imperfect, but to illustrate that progress comes when Americans recognize that all, not just some, possess common rights and are due common respect. Such is a pragmatic vision with a moral component. If the rights of others are sacrosanct, then so are yours. In a democracy, the pursuit of power for power's sake, devoid of devotion to equal justice and fair play, is tempting but destructive. All anyone knew of the second inaugural speech before its delivery was that it would be pithy. The New York Herald reported in a preview that the address will probably be the briefest one ever delivered. Lincoln, who had written every word of it himself, had had the speech printed in two columns. He would read it with his spectacles, standing behind a small table fashioned from cast-iron pieces left over from the construction of the Capitol Dome. Benjamin Brown French, the marshal for the ceremonies, made sure a glass of water was within the president's reach. To Frederick Douglass, who braved the mud to hear the president in the open air, Lincoln's ensuing address sounded more like a sermon than a state paper. In fact, it was both. The conscience of the nation must be roused, Douglass, the abolitionist editor and orator who had escaped slavery in Maryland, had long argued. Our enterprise is eminently a religious one, dependent for success entirely on the religious sentiment of the people the abolitionist Wendell Phillips wrote. As president, Lincoln remarked that he had been 
brought to a living reflection that nothing in my power, whatever, would succeed without the direct assistance of the Almighty. He moved toward emancipation.